Hi, this is Pastor Joseph San Jose of Open Table Metropolitan Community Church or Open Table MCC. At ito po ang ating second episode ng ating uh, Pride Month or Proud Faith series na Homosexuality is Not a Sin. Um, at itong session natin for today or for this particular recording is actually um, was conducted by Pastor Kakay Pamaran uh, for that particular Sunday. Um, she is uh, the field education officer of Union Theological Seminary where uh, she also graduated Master of Divinity. Uh, at, I, um, it is also the same school where I uh, graduated with the same course. Uh, ngayon, Nagkaroon din kasi kami ng another uh, technical problem sa, sa recording ng actual session. So we had to so we were not able to record Pastor Kakay doing the actual session. So to those who were there ng session na yon, um, baka medyo iba yung latag niya sa latag ko ng session na ito. But it is of the same uh, same resources, same analysis, same uh, method of, of reading and interpreting the Bible. Uh, at wala din ako nung session na yon. she had to do the session because uh, I was uh, away for, a, a, for, a, for an important family event. Um, it was actually the 25th anniversary ng pagkamadre ng tita ko na Carmelite nun. So, I, I asked Pastor Kakay to do the session on my behalf. Ngayon, ang, ang session na to, ang topic uh, for the second session is actually regarding the story of Adam and the story, the famous story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Itong dalawang kwentong ito sa Genesis are the two most famous verses na palaging ginagamit ng mga anti-LGBT, ng mga conservative Christians, to argue against and to attack uh, LGBT uh, people, LGBT persons, na using Genesis 1, wala daw ginawang bakla at tomboy ang Diyos, babae at lalaki lang daw, at dahil sa lakit babae lang ginawa ng Diyos, dapat sila lang ang para sa isa't isa. Ang Genesis 19 naman, which is the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, is also a famous story in the Bible, in Genesis, ginagamit laban sa LGBT na uh, yung mga kalalakihan daw ng Sodom ay mga bakla at yung kabaklaan nila ng Sodom ay ang nag para wasaki ng Diyos ang, ang Sodom at Gomorrah. So titignan natin sa session na ito, may katotohanan ba ito? At uh, Tama ba ang pagbasa sa uh, Genesis 1:26 and 27 pati sa Genesis chapter 2 at sa Genesis chapter 19 which is again the, the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Ngayon it is important that you are sa mga manonood natin na hindi nakaka-attend ng session or gustong review ang, ang mga session, importante na familiar kayo sa basic method of, of interpretation and biblical analysis para fully ma-appreciate nyo at maintindihan ano ba ang basihan namin, ng MCC at ng mga other progressive churches at progressive Christians in reading and analyzing and interpreting scripture the way that, that uh, we do. Uh, that the way that academics and scholars uh, actually uh, uh, read and interpret scripture. So kung hindi, nyo pa, kung hindi pa kayo naka-attend naka o nakapanood ng unang session namin, the foundational session, we have another video uh, regarding Bible in context and the, met the, base, the two most basic uh, method of interpretation. So you can, you can go back there and, and, and watch it again. Now, nonetheless, I will give a little bit of review. So, ang gagamitin nating method, the, the, the two basic method of interpretation is number one, yung 
historical material context. No, we use the um, we we consider what is the historical uh, context of a particular story or a particular book in the Bible to 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 be able to understand why <clears throat> why a particular story, a particular verse, or a particular book was written in the way that they were written. What was the surrounding historical, cultural, political circumstances uh, surrounding that particular story? So, gagamitin natin yan sa, primarily sa story ng Sodom at Gomorrah sa Genesis 19. Pero gagamitin din natin sa parehong story ang tinatawag nating textual analysis, no? Liter textual literary analysis or method. Na ang ibig sabihin ay babasahin natin ng hihimayin at babasahin natin dahan-dahan ang detalye ng kwento. Kasama na rin dyan yung pagtingin natin sa original language ng kwento kasi ang Bible nga ay naisulat sa Hebrew the, the, the Hebrew Testament the Old Testament was written in, in Biblical Hebrew while the New Testament was written in Koine Greek so particularly in Genesis 1 titignan natin uh, we will analyze the text at titignan natin yung original language, tama ba ang translation accurate ba ang translation at Ano ba ang mga implications sa one form of inter one form of translation over another form of uh, translation? So yan ang dalawa nating method sa pagtingin natin sa kwento ng Genesis ng nilikha yung tao at sa kwento naman ng uh, Sodom at Gomorrah. Ngayon one of our primary resource or reference would be aside sa Bible. At ang Bible na gagamitin natin ay New Revised Standard Version or NRSV. The other one is uh, the book Love Lost in Translation by Dr. Renato Lins. Uh, Love Lost in Translation, Homosexuality and the Bible. So si Dr. Uh, Renato Lins is a Bible scholar and translator. At ang kanyang librong ito ay tinitignan niya ang pag-translate from the original Hebrew at original Greek, tinitingnan niya paano ba ito translate kino-compare niya yung iba't ibang translation, at ito ba ay, uh, ang, ang pagkakatranslate ba is accurate from its original meaning in the original language. At tinitingnan niya rin ano yung naging kasaysayan ng translation. So, yan ang kanyang naging work this book took him 15, 10 to 15 years to accomplish studying translation. And Dr. Links is, uh, understands Biblical Hebrew, Aramaic, Koine Greek, Classical Greek, um, Cuneiform yata, marunong din siya. And also, from what I heard, I'm not sure about this, he also knows Aztec language. Diba? Napaka-fabulous ni Dr. Links. So, so, that's our references. You can also go to www.wouldjesusdiscriminate.com Some of the things that we are talking here are also based from that, from, the, from that particular resource. And, and other other materials that you can also look up online. Okay, so unahin natin ang uh, kwento ng Genesis, the creation of, of humans, ang pagkalikha sa tao. So basahin natin ang Genesis 1 chapter 26 and 27. Uh, again, I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Then God said, let us make humankind... In our image, according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. 
So God created humankind in His image. In the image of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. The, the, nung nilikha yung tao, it was on the sixth day, ika-anim na araw nilikha ng Diyos ang tao, after niya likhain ang mga other uh, creatures of the earth. Ngayon, titignan natin ang Hebrew word na Adam. So, nilikha ng Diyos ang Adam. Hindi si Adan. Importante yan. In the original Hebrew text, pag binasa mo sa original na lingwahe ng Biblical Hebrew or Old Hebrew, ang pagkasulat sa kanya ay nilikha ng Diyos at nilikha ng Diyos ang Adam. God created the Adam. Kasi ang original Hebrew word niya is Ha-Adam. Yung Ha, h a it refers to the article the, T-H-E, or sa Tagalog, ang salitang ang, A-N-G. Ang Adam. Ngayon, ang, ang salitang Adam, hindi siya pangalan, at least hindi pa sa kwentong ito, sa part ng kwentong ito, hindi pa siya pangalan. It's not yet a proper name. Siya ay small letter A. No, Adam, small letter A. Kaya nga mayroong article na ha or salitang T H E, the the Adam. So nilikha ng Diyos ang Adam. Ngayon ang Adam, ang salitang Adam sa Hebrew comes from the word Adama. Adama. Which means ground or soil or earth. Uh, at in, in, I don't know where I read this. It actually sp- specifically means red soil or red ground. So, parang uh, kla- isang klase ng lupa na mamula-mula. So, the, si, si, sa Genesis 1, and Genesis 1, chapter 26 and 27, nilikha ng Diyos ang Adam, the Hebrew word Adam. From the word Adama, earthling, ground, soil. Ngayon, pinaniwala tayo na ang unang nilikha ng Diyos, pag tinanong mo ang isang ordinaryong kristyano, maski nga hindi kristyano, pag tinanong mo sila about kwento ng creation, the, the creation story, the creation of, of humans sa Genesis, ang unang iisipin nila at ang unang sasabihin nila, ang unang nilikha ng Diyos ay ang lalaki. Tapos ang susunod na nasasabihin, ang sumunod na nilikha ng Diyos ay ang babae mula sa tadyang ni Adan. Pero mali yung ganyang pagkaintindi o pagkaunawa for the longest time because hindi naman lalaki ang unang nilikha ng Diyos. Ang narinig natin at pagpupunta mo siya sa original niyang Hebrew, ang nilikha ng Diyos ay ang Adam. Galing sa salitang Adama. So, ang tamang translation would have been God created the groundling or the earthling. At sa NRSV nga, sa NRSV, sa New Revised Standard Version, ang, ang pagka-translate sa kanya sa verse 27, so God created humankind. Ngayon, sabi ni Dr. Links, um, yun nga, according to Dr. Links, mas tamang translation would have been earthling or groundling for two reasons. Number one, uh, yun nga, dahil galing sa sa word na Adama, which, which is earth, at the same time, hindi lalaki ang unang nilikha. Yung humankind, according to Dr. Links, pinaka-okay na yung translation na humankind or human, pero hindi niya binibigyan ng, hindi, hindi niya dinidenote yung pagka-earth, yung pag, pagka-groundling nung, nung unang taong nilikha. So, a little bit inaccurate pa rin yung word na human or humankind. 
For Dr. Ling's, the, the correct translation would have been groundling or earthling. Ngayon, tinignan ni Dr. Ling ang iba't ibang Bible. No? Different Bibles with different translations. He looked at about 12 to 13 translations. Isa na nga dun ang NRSV, New Revised Standard Versions. Uh, New, Re New Revised Standard Version. At sa 12 or 13 translation na ito, apat lang yung medyo malapit-lapit sa tamang translation. At ang pinakamalapit nga dito ay yung sa NRSV, which is uh, humankind. Sa tatlo, sa, uh, dun sa tatlo pa, ang, ang nilagay dun ay uh, human beings. Human beings. Na in, a, in plural, para bang dalawa, ang, dalawa o marami ang nilikha ng Diyos. Pero mali din yung translation na yon bukod sa hindi siya nagbibigay ng, ng earthy or, or soil kind of, of meaning. Mali ang translation niya dahil ha-adam refers to a singular. Ibig sabihin, iisa lang, isang tao lang yung nilikha ng Diyos. Hindi human beings which denotes plural. Marami, maraming nilikhang Mga tao. And then the rest of the translations, like the your favorite ng marami mga evangelicals, uh, the uh, NIV, NIV, New International Version, and the, the other translations, prefer to translate it as man. Man, as, as lalaki. And God created man in God's image and likeness. God created them male and female. Maling translation siya. Uh, because the Hebrew word for man is ish. Ish, I-S-H. And woman naman is isha. I-S-H-A. Huh? So if, if God created man, the Hebrew word should have been ish at hindi siya dapat ha-adam. So mali, mali, parang mali yata or inaccurate yata yung uh, majority of the translations of, of Genesis 1. So, the, the, the first human is Ha-Adam, an earthling, a groundling, hindi po lalaki. And that is from its original Hebrew. At isa lang ang ginawa. Kasi nga, Ha-Adam, the earthling. Pero ang kasunod niyang verse, kung titignan natin, and God created them male and female. So from singular, meron kang plural of male and female. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Dalawa ba talaga ang nilikha ng Diyos? O isa lang ang nilikha ng Diyos? Is it really singular or is it really plural? So, ang understanding dito at ang analysis ni Dr. Links is that God created one human being with two gendered natures. Dalawang gender. One human, one earthling with two genders. Dual natures or a combination of, of, of gendered natures. At ito ay, kung titignan mo pa lalo yung, yung Hebrew, this is consistent with the word naman for God. The word for God that was used was Elohim in the plural form. But the plural form, pagkakarender sa kanya in the Hebrew, plural siya pero ginawa siyang um, proper name. Para, para siyang ginawang prop, not really proper name, pero para siyang ginawang proper name. So, Elohim siya, which is in the plural, pero ginawa siyang uppercase E. So, meaning, nakakalito na singular yet plural. Meaning that, I mean, kung titignan nyo nga yung language, sabi ng Diyos doon, then Elohim said, let us make humankind in our image and likeness. Ngayon, alam natin ang mga Hudyo, hindi naman sila polytheist. Hindi naman sila polytheist. 
They believe in one God. Pero, ang pagkasulat sa sa Genesis 20, chapter 1 verse 26 and 27, the God here is is plural yet also singular. So kung titignan mo yung pagka-render sa earthling which is singular, ha Adam, but created in in plural na male and female. So it is consistent and then created in God's image and likeness. God that is singular at the same time plural. Ngayon, ano ang implikasyon nito? It only means that God created the first human, the first earthling, with both genders, with both sexes. Dual gendered nature. Dual or a combination of male and female. And when we say that this is created in the image of God, in the image and likeness of God, it only means that God is also both male and female and a combination of both. So, naintindihan nyo na kung bakit uh, hindi to makakayang tanggapin ng mga conservative Christians. But it is in the original Hebrew. It is in the original Hebrew text, how it was written by its original writers. Ngayon, pupunta tayo dun sa Genesis 2. Ang kwento naman kung saan akala natin kinuha si Eva, si Eve, mula sa tadyang ng lalaki, mula sa rib bone ng lalaki. Which is also, uh, according to Renato Links and other Bible scholars uh, today, is a mistranslation Although not intentionally, but over the years, ng pagkakatranslate sa kanya and the implications of that, nagpasa-pasa na siya and, and that became uh, tradition. Naging tradition na yung, yung interpretation or yung pagkakatranslate sa kanya na bone rib. Pero hindi po bone rib. We have been made to believe that that a woman came from the rib of a man. Now the the the, the rib, the Hebrew word that was translated as rib bone, is the word sela. Sela. And the only time that sela was ever translated to be bone rib. In all of the Hebrew Bible and all of the Hebrew Scripture is in this particular verse in the second chapter of Genesis. So, ating tignan ang Genesis chapter 2. Basahin ulit natin. Starting with verse 21. So, the Lord God caused a deep sleep. To fall upon, translation nga dito, uh, fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife. They become one flesh, and the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. So this is second chapter of Genesis, particularly on the verse... That speaks about the rib. God took out the rib. Now, Chela is, sabi ko nga kanina, the only time that Chela was translated to be rib ay sa kwentong ito. In other parts of the, of the Hebrew Bible, pag lumilitaw yung word na Chela, siya ay palaging ginagamit as side. Or it is understood as side. 
side of the wall or in Exodus um in Exodus it was used as the opposite side or opposite sides of the ark of the covenant so tinignan niya ni Dr. Links at at yun nga nakita ni Dr. Links that sela in in oh, in the other verses of the Bible that it was mentioned it is understood as side gilid tag gilid no? side of the wall side of the temple opposite sides of the ark of the covenant Ngayon, saan ang galing ang rib? Tanong ni Dr. Links. Bakit nagkaroon ng translation ng rib? The rib came, the first time that the rib came was when St. Jerome first translated the Greek Old Testament or what we call as the Septuagint, no? the, the, the Old Testament from its Hebrew translation, I mean, from its Hebrew original was translated into Greek, which we call Septuagint. At yung Septuagint, ginamit ni St. Jerome to translate the Bible, that particular Hebrew Bible or Greek Bible, into uh, into Latin. No? At ang tinatawag nating uh, Latin Vulgate, Vulgata. And the Latin word that Jerome used for to translate cella is costam or costis, which in the Latin can interchangeably be used as side or rib. No, sa, sa Latin, pwede mong gamitin yung costam at costis either as gilid or as uh, rib bone. But that is not the case with cella because cella is specifically for side. It is never used as rib. It was ne It is not understood in its original Hebrew and original Hebrew culture as, as rib bone. No, it is side. Gilid ang uh, salitang cella. So, nung, nung translate ni St. Jerome ang, ang cella as costam or costis, over the years after that, it, they assume that it refers to rib. No? It, 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 they, they assume that it is rib. At yung Latin Vulgate nga, naging, I mean yung Latin, the language Latin has been the language of the church, of the Western church for the longest time, it has also been the, lang the, the language of the worship of the church in the, in the Western side. Um, the Roman Catholic Church used Latin in their worship. Kaya na, na perpetuate ang translation at ang understanding na ang cella or ang babae ay galing sa um, sa rib bone ng lalaki. Which again, uh, Renato Links and other scholars today now refute. nire refute na nila yan. So ano ang implication yan? Ano ang implication to say that ang uh, cella is side? Or that God took the side and created it into a woman? Number one, that women, again, did not come from the rib of a man, from a particular part of a man, because it was never rib in the first place. Woman was, the, was from the side. At kung babalik tayo sa Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, which is a trans, the proper translation, is an earthling with two, uh, with two or dual or a combination of male and female uh, gender natures, it then the implication of translation in, in, in theological perspective means that the first earthling in Genesis 2 would have been divided into male and female from, one, from a single entity, from a single androgynous entity. God separated the female side 
and then there came a male entity and a female entity, an ish man and an isha, a female or a woman. Ngayon, ano pang implication nito? What is the other implication of this? That the first human, prior to it being separated into this male and female, means that the first human is, can, I mean, you can describe it as androgynous, you can describe it as intersex, or even transgendered, or multigendered. So, now we will understand why conservative Christians will go crazy uh, and will not be able to accept that the first human created in the image and likeness of God is most probably multigendered transgendered, intersex, multisex. And the implication of that being that this earthling is created in the image and likeness of God means that God is both male and female. God can be male. God can be female. God is both male and female. God is a combination of male and female. God is, is everything in between these male and female natures. God is all genders, all sexualities, but at the same time, God is neither male and female, and God is beyond gender and sexuality. And all of this is, 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 is valid, is acceptable, is, is, it's, in the, it's in the text, it's in the original Hebrew text. And LGBT people, LGBTQI plus people can rediscover the, the divine nature that they have, the divine character that they have written in the original language of scripture. And therefore, as Nadia Bolsweber, Reverend Nadia Bolsweber sa, sa kanyang librong Shameless, uh, she said, and I just heard this in, in one of the worship services ng, ng MCC, uh, another MCC church. Uh, she said in her book that by, by looking at the, the, the Genesis stories, the creation stories, that has been always used against LGBT people, in the same manner, LGBTQ people, queer people can reclaim can use the same stories to see our divine worth, our dignity. So, by a careful study of, of the Bible, in its original language, in its textual analysis, we can say that LGBTQ people are created in the beautiful, fabulous, wonderful image and likeness of God who we believe to be also queer.